Hi, welcome to What's Up in Real Estate. My name is Brian Stuckey. We've got a great show for you. This is the last time that we're going to have realtors on before the new year, and we want to get their forecast and you'll see what today's market's like. This is a real estate show, so of course we want to have our uh, realtors on the program. Marnie Carlson's here with us. She's with Temple Properties in Campbell. Jim Hemphill from Alon Pinnell in Saratoga, and Sandy Whittle, who's with Campy Properties in Los Altos. Um, Guys, we're just going to have a general program, and we're just going to talk about today's market. That's that's the whole emphasis today. And, and Marty, why don't I start with you? And how do you see today's market, real estate market today? Are we are things down? Are they up? Um, this has been the busiest year I've seen. I've been in the real estate field for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. I've never had multiple offers in the last five years. So it's been an incredible year for me. Mm -hmm. um, Buyers are, have been very aggressive, which has been different, and sellers have uh, had a little bit more of the negotiating power where before it was really in the buyer's hands. Mm -hmm. When you say buyers are more aggressive, uh, um, they're more willing to meet uh, the selling, the asking price, mm -hmm. than I've seen before, and even going above the asking price. Okay. Jim, what's it look like in Saratoga? You know, I know you well, it's, there. it's been a, a great year and, and also in the high-end market uh, has been very very active um, the problem is that the inventory out there uh, we had such a, a great first half of 96 uh, that there's very few homes uh, uh, for buyers to choose from right now and those buyers that are smart not looking at a time when there aren't too many buyers that can find something are are doing real well mm -hmm. what, what is causing the lack of inventory do you think it could be uh, due to the election and the possible tax uh, changes that people may be waiting uh, till 97 to put their homes on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but with the economy, the way it has bounced back, I think that uh, the forecast for 97 is fantastic. Okay. Uh, Sandy, you're, you primarily work Los Altos, so I think all three of you would work anywhere in the Santa Clara Valley mm -hmm. pretty much. But mm -hmm. Sandy, what's things out in Los Altos, another uh, high area profile area perhaps yeah. for housing well Jim made a good point talking about the inventory being <clears throat> being down and one of the questions you would ask is why aren't maybe there's more homes on the market and it's difficult for people who are trying to buy a home to find something so consequently they're not putting their home on the market because they'll have nowhere to go so it's kind of a catch-22 they don't have an opportunity to, to find what they want so in the interim they don't put their house on the market fortunately in the area with people involved with the high-tech industry a lot of people have the ability to wait to find the home they want make the offer and then they'll put their home on the market but that's probably one of the one of the main factors for not having as much property but it's a it's a it's a pretty it's a good sellers market right now okay if you have people in existing homes right now who aren't putting their houses on the market what's the forecast looking for new housing developments uh, what's your feel on that is there new developments proposed that are going to be coming out does anybody have a feel on that or well you know that's it was all orchards for so long in this area and, and there's in fact I tell people all the time I grew up in the country and had the city move to me in Mountain View and that's essentially what it was but there, there just aren't the developments anymore to for a lot of homes it's, it's spot individual houses that might go up or remodels things like that mm -hmm. so um, one of the things I do with a lot of my sellers because they're worried about selling their home before they find a property is to reassure them of, of working with a rent back. Um, a lot of rent backs are going on. I've, I've done numerous clients this year where we, they incur an offer on their home and then we do a rent back up to 90, even 120 days while, we're, while I'm pounding the pavement and trying to find the right home for them. Mm -hmm. So that helps in and the market. I think Marnie's right and I think the fact that you can take the stress off of selling your home when you don't have to sell it. When you put your house on the market, get it fully prepped, ready to go, and you can sit back. And in this coming spring, it, which is going to, I think, be a gangbusters, a, a seller's market, when you can get your home ready, put it on, uh, and sit back and, and hold firm on your price, that, that's one of the things we saw happen in, in the spring of 96. And I think it's going to happen to even a, a greater uh, degree in 97. Uh, mm -hmm. Then, you know, the worst thing in the world could be put your things in storage and rent for a short time. But I think the, the difference in the money you make by being able to, to not be pressured into taking a, a lower price will more than pay for itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
combined with the forecast and you think it's going to be a great spring as you mentioned Jim mm -hmm. um, if someone's considering doing a, some home improvements or doing some, doing some general improvements to the house would you recommend that if they're if they're thinking that things are going to be improved during the spring maybe they're thinking is that during the holidays that it's not a strong point time to sell which we're going to uh, talk about in a moment but let's say they're, they're thinking that spring's going to be the best time would you encourage people to do home improvements at that time make the investment on that very very definitely uh, you know, landscaping, kitchens, mm -hmm. uh, bathrooms, some of the high uh, visible areas are extremely important that look very, very sharp. Uh, that's really going to bring, bring your price in the spring. Yeah. And okay. I think in addition to that, too, is you can't, you can't assume anything because if you come on the market the wrong way, just figuring that it's a strong market, you're going to get your price, and then you don't, and you're 30 days down the road. You're going to pay mm -hmm. three times fold what it would have cost you to improve the house and along with the stress of waiting for it to sell. But mm -hmm. you've got to come on the market the right way and those improvements uh, will definitely pay for themselves. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you recommend talking to a realtor? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very <laughs> about definitely. Those, <laughs> about those things, sure. Um, realtors would definitely have a, a, an idea what the market's looking like, the fluctuations and everything else. It'd be highly recommended. Um, do you see their phone numbers on the bottom? You may want to take them down, their phone, their phone number and their name. Uh, Marty, I wanted to ask about the holiday season. It's, it's Christmas. We just got over Thanksgiving. How does this typically affect purchase, uh, the purchase market? Um, most of my buyers, what I'm doing right now is sitting down, having them pre-qualified, working with them on getting their loan paper started, because that's the first thing. And then giving them information on different geographical areas and I'm pulling up listings, it's, it's the market definitely does not have a lot of homes listed currently. So I'm trying to prepare people to, to just get information so that they're prepared when we do find the right house. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people are waiting to get through the Christmas holiday and they don't want to deal with having buyers coming in and looking at their home. And the general sellers are feeling really positive that they're going to get a good price next year. Mm -hmm. So they're waiting. I think that's exactly what Jim had said. It's going to be a strong when we get to the fall, or excuse me, the spring next year. I think, and, and really, I found that it's not just the spring. I, I tell people this all the time, and Sandy will remember uh, from from years back. The single best open house Sunday mm. is the first Sunday after January first. Um, People have been cooped up in their homes. They've been watching football games on New Year's Day forever. The, the wives say, okay, uh, hubby, let's go and, go and and get out and look at a couple of homes. And I've held homes open in December uh, and then the same house the first Sunday after New Year's Day and had 35 people come through. And it's that way every year. So, And with this coming spring with interest rates gonna be low, uh, I think that is a time that uh, we're going to see January being the start of a real hot market. You had asked a question earlier about how's the market in December, and for those of you that might be thinking about selling your home come this next season or at some point after the school year, one of the things about November and December during, during the, uh, the calendar year is that the real buyers are out there. The people that really want to buy a home are going to be out there, and so a lot of times people think because of the holidays, not going to have the activity, but quite a, actually the looky loos are out shopping at, at Macy's, and the people that are looking to buy homes are going to be out there. Plus, as a seller, you don't have as much competition. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's 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 a good time for sellers, and it's a good time for buyers during the holiday season. In general, people seem to go into a hibernation when it comes to the, the purchase market. Sure. But at the same time, I was reading an article in the Mercury News where they said this is a great time for buyers to be getting a great deal. If somebody's been transferred, let's say, to the East Coast or whatever mm -hmm. might be going on during that period of time, there's some real anxious sellers at that point. So um, we're going to be taking a break here real shortly. But Jim, I want to mention, he, Jim Hemphill mentioned lower interest rates in 97. I'm very interested about that. So when we come back, we'll be asking Jim and, the, and our other realtor friends about that. Um, and at the same time, when we come back, we want to talk about some current issues, lead-based paint. There was an article in the Mercury News with regards to that. We're going to talk about the negotiations that are involved when, it, when you have a situation where there's lead-based paint. We'll be right back. Join us. Stay with us. Who are you? Seymour Smoke. Smoke detector. The more smoke I see, the more noise I make. 
and I see more smoke coming from that toaster. <gasps> Thanks for warning us, Seymour. That's my job. <coughs> I hate smoke. It's disgusting. <coughs> It gives me a headache. So whenever I see it or smell it, I make this noise to warn you. Because where there's smoke, there may be fire. Good tip, Seymour. How many smoke detectors do you have in your home? Count them. Is there one outside your bedroom? There should be. Tell your parents. Be cool about fire safety. Be cool. Hi, welcome back to What's Up in Real Estate. Um, my guests, Marty Carlson, Jim Hemphill, and Sandy Whittle. And we're going to talk about lead-based paint issues. More probably because there was an article that came out from the Mercury News. It says, get the lead out. And uh, I think that stirred up a lot of questions that people had for us as far as in the mortgage industry. But I know that the realtors being on the front lines as well have to deal with this issue. Definitely in disclosure in a real estate contract. So I, d I just want to ask, Marty, let me ask you first. Actually, I want to hold you off last. I know you got a story with it, but Sandy and Jim, what's uh, with the issue of lead-based paint? Does that come up quite a bit with the idea that uh, children are exposed to it? What kind of concerns or what kind of issues do you have to deal with in a situation like that with the disclosure? Jim? Well, we have, uh, and we our office has been using, as probably both of the other offices as well, uh, a booklet for the past year and a half dealing with lead-based paint. Uh, so even though the date was December 6 when it went into effect, we've been doing this for quite a while. The big thing, I think, is to let the consumer, the buyer, aware of the fact that homes built prior to 1978 probably contained lead in the paint. And what the problems could occur from ingesting that lead, uh, primarily with children, such as dizziness, vomiting, etc., Brain da uh, possible brain damage, uh, the, and what you need to do uh, to keep that under control. Uh, and uh, I think once the buyers, so far in my situation, uh, once I've explained it to the buyers, and most of, a lot of homes I've sold have been prior to '78, uh, they have not been concerned uh, because they know how to handle it. Just like we had the asbestos scare a few years back. To me, it's the, the same type of situation. It's, it's uh, creating knowledge with the consumer, with the buyer. Okay. Sandy, is it, do you think it's something of, of that, that people that are going to buy a lead-based paint, they just really need to be educated on it, that there isn't a great concern there, or that there is a great concern? Well, I, I think it, I've been in the industry since 1985, and <clears throat> Jim was talking about some of the disclosure booklets and things, and we've been using those for a, a couple of years. but. The consumer protection these days, in terms of knowing w what's involved with lead-based paint or asbestos or uh, the construction of homes for earthquake, all those factors, um, there's just so many resources for getting things tested and, and checked out. I haven't had too many issues where it's been a problem for the buyers because they they know that certain things have changed since 1978 in terms of methods of construction, um, but. Uh, it, it's something that when people do have a concern, there's lots of resources to, that I can send them to or, or, or refer them to that they can go and talk to the professionals about it. I haven't had it as an issue, but it has been brought up and, and there's gr great sources these days for the consumer to go out and make sure they're educated and feel protected in what they're, they're buying. Sure. Marty, I saved you to last because I know you had a story on a, a situation in, with regards to the base, base paint. So. Right. I have um, a listing. I actually just closed the transaction. Um, it was an older home in uh, Willow Glen, and a lot of the older homes, this was a 90-year-old home, and the paint was chipping, and so we hired a painter, and I had given her a couple people, and he was aware that it had lead-based paint. That, that was back and when they had ur uranium-based paint, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, he improperly chipped away the paints around the window sills and left you know, a lot of paint chips, and it just became a very elaborate expenditure of money. We had to have it tested, the soil tested, it was like a couple thousand to clean it up. I, the point is you need somebody who knows how to, when you have somebody come and, and work with that kind of paint, they, they need to have experience in it. And there's a lot of numbers, people you can contact. If you have children, um, there's, your doctor can test for lead base to see what the level is. It's mainly mm -hmm. the dust that for children. 
so that's why it's very important that if it's removed, it's done properly, so it doesn't create the poisonous dust. Okay. Um, I want to go into other areas of negotiation, um, it, and this is for the purpose of first-time home buyers more than anything else. Um, there's still a lot of people out there, especially with the high rents, they're thinking, mm -hmm. boy, is it better to rent or to buy? And I think it's a, there's some legitimate, legitimate benefits to buying, of course, in today's market. Mm -hmm. What are some negotiating points? You always have purchase price, but what are some of the other ones, Marnie? For first-time buyers? First-time home buyers? Um, well, or just the in rents, I, I mean the rents, also a lot of my clients that are renting, not only are the rents jumping up, people that are looking to find nice rentals, it, there's not that many rentals available. The rental market's really tight. There's a lot of incentive programs, 3% down for first-time buyers. Mm -hmm. um, and being the rates are lower, I think people can qualify where a year or two they had a harder time. Mm -hmm. a lot of, and you're in financing, you know, the first-time buyer programs are very strong. And, and also with some first-time buyers, I will ask the seller to give a credit towards closing costs. Mm -hmm. um, it may take a lot less money to buy something than, than people have in their mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anything to add, Jim, on that? No, I think uh, Marnie's right. The I'm right now involved in negotiating with the f on a property for a first-time home buyer, and they're putting five percent down, and they've got pre-approval already from their lender. So that's one of the key things I think for first-time home buyers that are putting five percent or less down is to let the seller know that they are pre-approved, not just mm -hmm. pre-qualified, mm -hmm. but pre-approved. That really helps, and will definitely help in the spring when we have multiple offers and they're one of the multiple offers for a seller to see even though they're putting a little down they're all set to go that will really help mm -hmm. so for me and I think for you too it helps your your type of business out the lending business uh, to have this all done up front mm -hmm. then it makes it so much easier and puts them at a, a, at a up at the front of the line in multiple offers okay I, I think in addition to that too quite often <clears throat> don't be afraid to ask the seller to credit some closing costs, because quite honestly, if they can get their home sold, they're they're ready to do that, and you can you can negotiate that in, and so as a buyer, you have the opportunities, you know, and don't be afraid to to ask for it. Okay, usually if there's a if there is a concession, let's say in closing costs, can you expect that the, that the seller will get their list price or at least close to it? I don't know. Well, what do you in, think? in this market right now, and I, I a, a lot of buyers are running around, the first time buyers trying to find something and. You can negotiate yourself beyond really the scope of, of what the value is there because if w where we were in 96 and where things were going to be in 97, I tell people, I say, you know, we'll continue looking and looking however long it takes, but at some point you're going to have to get on the elevator because if you keep taking the stairs, the elevator is going to pass you up and you're going to be at a different level of housing because the market is very, very strong. It'll mm -hmm. stay that way through 97. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of piggybacking on what Sandy said, the what you can show a first time home buyer is if we can get the seller to pay maybe two or three thousand dollars of closing costs that don't have to come out of your pocket then perhaps you can buy a little bit nicer house and maybe mm -hmm. instead of one for two thirty or two forty you can buy one for two fifty or two sixty and as we all know that's a big difference in twenty or twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars in that price range now you have more homes perhaps to show that first time buyer nicer neighborhood etc and they'll be a lot happier okay I, I want to touch up on something real quick and, and that's Jim had mentioned getting pre-qualified versus pre-approved there's a big difference when you get pre-qualified you call someone like myself at first portfolio or your favorite broker and they would get you pre-qualified we can provide a realtor a letter saying that they are pre-qualified but being pre-approved is a step up it has a little bit you know, more to it. Uh, a realtor can go in and say, hey, they're pre-approved. They've, they've already gone through the paperwork. There's been verifications coming back that, that, uh, that verify that the information that they put on the application. It's a step up. And you've, if you've got a pre-approval versus a pre-qual and your realtor is able to bring that to the table, you are going to get the, you're in line to get uh, get the home that you want. And, uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, and beyond that too, when you're in the offer presentation, mm -hmm. if you're in there at same price with somebody else and someone's got a pre-approval versus a pre-qualification, mm -hmm. the person with the pre-approval is going to be moved right into that into that home, even if maybe they're a, a thousand a thousand dollars less maybe in the offering price, but they have a value in the fact that they're they've been pre-approved. That's a, a great point. Great, uh -huh. Sandy. Real quick, I got to catch up. Just about. 15 seconds, 97 projections right down the line. Sandy? Oh, it's, 
you know, we our industry here in, in terms of what based our real estate market was the defense industry and electronics for a long time. And since uh, since that's gone away, we're well diversified and I, from high tech to software to communication systems, the internet, interactive TV, it's going to be a great 97 and 98 for the Valley in general. I didn't pin you on interest rates, but uh, go ahead, Jim, about 10, 15. I, I, it's going to be a great year, 97, for sellers. They're going to get their price and for buyers, they're going to have good low interest rates. Okay, morning. Um, I just want to encourage people that are on the fence renting that aren't sure if they can qualify that they get in touch with a lender and because there are so many people that have the income that really can support the payment but they think they don't have enough money and with creative with a creative broker they can step into that ownership as opposed to the renting. Okay. I want to thank Marnie Carlson, Jim Hemphill and Sandy Whittle for being my, our guest today. When I come back we'll be with Greg Flowers. We'll be answering some of the questions that you've asked of us. We'll be right back. What do you mean?